Good evening, citizens of the world, uh, or not so much. Uh, today, we are here for um, comedic value. We're going to be talking about uh, the comedian study, and uh, so I've come up with this uh, very clever title. And um, let's get down to business. So, in 2007, that's a long time ago, we used to have this guy called uh, Christopher Hitchens, uh, who has since died, uh, not very uh, funnily, um, and. Um, he wrote this article in some woman's magazine, Vanity Fair, and saying that uh, women aren't funny, female comedians bad, uh, they're lesbians, and so on. Um, and this, of course, he, I guess he did that to troll some uh, female comedians, and it, it totally worked. And um, But it, it got me thinking, though, So uh, because if you think around in your personal life and so on, m chances are most people you know who are really funny are going to be male. And so what this means is that you can probably figure out that there's a... There's a sex difference in, in humor production ability, as it's called in academic language. And um, there is indeed a meta-analysis of this published uh, recently, uh, like apparently this year, but I think last year uh, in reality. And um, a fairly typical standard uh, meta-analysis. Um, they covered about 30 studies, um, 5,000 people and so on. It's mostly student samples. Um, find the effect size is not that large, 0.3 or so. Um, and of course, since we're a bit suspicious, uh, we're going to be looking for evidence of, of issues, mainly publication bias, right? Uh, so if we start up with the the forest plot here, uh, I don't know exactly, I couldn't figure out what they sorted uh, this by, um, but there doesn't seem to be any obvious p-hacking going on here. And if uh, you look at their funnel plot, it looks reasonably symmetric. The typical publication bias tests, they come back uh, negative or you know they don't find anything. But considering that the sample size is 28 studies, uh, maybe it, it's not actually that well powered. These publication bias tests, they need like 100 plus studies or so. Um, it's pretty symmetric. Um, we don't really see anything else. The only suspicious thing I see is this small cluster of studies that find a sl slight female advantage uh, in in a comedic production ability or human production ability, um, whereas the other most of the others find uh, some male advantage, uh, and we can say that uh, from a epistemic scientific perspective, we would actually expect uh, reverse publication bias here, uh, where larger findings are more suppressed than the uh, than smaller findings, and and the reason uh, for that is that um, there's uh, that the, uh, the people who do these kind of studies are going to be left-wing psychologists and they would prefer a world where there's no sex difference, right? Uh, so this has actually been found for uh, sex difference in spatial ability and, and some other similar things. I have a blog post uh, reviewing some of this. You can check it out. But in any case, we don't really see any serious evidence of this, so it's just kind of interesting. Um, if they do look at moderator effects, not just publication uh, bias, you basically find nothing. This is not one regression with everything at once. This is a bunch of uh, one at a time meta analysis approach, and uh, all of the p values are uh, large, right? So, um, so th we don't really find anything, uh, or they don't find anything. Um, in fact, uh, uh, Zach Goldberg, I sent him some of the slides for this for uh, pre casting review, I guess we can call it. And uh, he, he knew that there's a survey from 2012 where they did ask people um, who's the most funnier sex or which sex is the funniest. And um, it turns out there's a stereotype accuracy here too. Um, uh, unsurprisingly, women are more inclined to think women uh, are uh, more funny, but men are getting it pretty correct. Um, and even the BBC can get this one right. So this is actually their uh, headline coverage of that um, the meta-analysis we covered just before. So it seems that basically everybody agrees, well, majority of people agree that men are funnier than women. Science do show this. The science doesn't show any obvious problems, uh, shenanigans. Um, so it stands to reason then that if we zoom into the people who are literally so funny that they are uh, are professional comedians in some way or famous because of their uh, comedic abilities uh, then we should find a fairly large male uh, 
skew in the gender sex distribution of, of this. And so that was the point of my study upon reading the, uh, the Hitchens articles in 2007. Uh, I, I've been, I did this study uh, maybe in 2013 or something, but then I didn't publish it. So it took 10 years for uh, the inspiration to the actual study being published in 2017. So that's how science can be slow sometimes. Uh, it's a fairly typical Wikipedia study. I found uh, a page of comedians and then I download all their data and then I figure out how to determine what sex they have and then you, I did some stuff over time. So let's look at it. Um, f let's begin with the Wikipedia problems. Um, so Wikipedia data, good and bad. Let's go to the good, good stuff first. So good, it's free, it's massive. Uh, you can even go more languages, different ones. I stuck to the English Wikipedia because it has the most coverage. But if you want to study, say, uh, comedians and you were actually really serious about it, you'd, you'd have to dig into every, every local language, right? French Wikipedia, German Wikipedia, Japanese Wikipedia, uh, Italian. Some of these are quite large as well. Um, so it would totally be worth uh, looking into. The um, Wikipedia covers tons of um, different content. Uh, not just comedians, you know, scientists, newspaper journalists, uh, whatever the fuck you want to study, it's going to be covered uh, almost guaranteed. Um, there is a very rich unstructured uh, text that you can also mine uh, for any kind of uh, sentiment analysis or something like this. Um, then there's also updated automatically over time. So if you write some code and then you just you do your study, you come back five years later, you just rerun the code and it's all updated. You can see whatever is new, right? Um, that's also one of the bad things. It updates over time. And so if you're not careful and if you don't take local copies, uh, a copy of uh, you know the page as it was in 2010 or something, um, your your results will change and you, you're you going to have some problems. Uh, Wikipedia actually provides its own archives for you. So you really only have to just use the, the archive version, uh, the frozen version of some page. Uh, but a better approach is just say whenever you're doing any web scraping, save everything locally because you never know when the website is going to go down or you know someone is going to buy the domain or blah blah right. Other problems with Wikipedia: um, recency bias mostly covers people who were alive recently um, because most of Wikipedia is written by you know 30, 30 something year olds men who are alive in recent times. They aren't going to be writing about uh, comedians who were famous in the 1930s, right? Unless they're really famous, right? So there's going to be a massive recency effect of uh, a recency bias of uh, coverage about people who are, you know, recent comedians. There's going to be editor bias um, in who's included, how um, how the how the things are worded about them, how much content is there. Uh, it's going to reflect the interest of the people who edit stuff, right? The Wikipedia writers or the editors. Um, and there's very poor coverage in the English Wikipedia for uh, non-English uh, comedians. So I looked up some even quite famous Danish ones. Uh, I mean, famous famous in Denmark, and they don't often they don't have pages. When they do have pages, they have like you know five lines or something. Um, so as I said before, if you wanna if you wanna do other languages, you have to do them um, on their own. So to go into the uh, editorial bias, uh, we have this official Wikipedia project called Women in Red, uh, which is basically about uh, we need to have more women in the history books, and the history books being Wikipedia here, and they have this entire, you know, funding and admins that support it, and, you know, content gender gap, and blah, 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 the typical feminist stuff. And there is even this uh, this box in the bottom where that you can put on your, uh, your user page in Wikipedia, and this shows that you're someone who thinks it's very bad when women are in red. And so it, it's basically, it means you're a feminist, right? So it's actually quite useful for scientists or for science because when you scrape user profiles, you can look for people who have a user box like this and you know they're a feminist, right? Because no one else would put that. Um, so that that can tell you the, the prevalence of, say, feminism among Wikipedia editors or, for instance, among Wikipedia admins. And that could be quite interesting to study. Um, for these, uh, for those of you who don't uh, use Wikipedia that much, you may be wondering what does women in red mean actually? Um, it's not the women in right, uh, 
the women on the right here, those are not the women in red that you're looking for. Now, it's uh, women in red refers to the, the hyperlink being red when there's no page for some person. Uh, so that's all it is. It's uh, always a bit funny. So, suppose you want to do a Wikipedia study. You want to go to some archived version of some list. So you want to find a list. And in this case, we want to do list of comedians. And you can find a list of tons of other kind of people. List of scientists, list of American scientists, list of geologists, list of psychologists, list of astronauts. I don't know what the fuck you want. Um, there is a, there's a lot of stuff. And uh, so this page has something like 1400 or so uh, links, links to pages of comedians, right? And it, uh, each page, uh, you, since you have a link to them, you, you can crawl each page, right? Um, so you just got to scrape them. And so you write a very simple scraper in R. Since Wikipedia has no anti-scraping measures at all, you just hammer away until you're done, right? You can, you can paralyze it as well or multi-thread it and it, it's going to be very fast. Um, when you're done, you just save it locally and you can just reload the file once you have done it for once, right? That way you're you're basically future proof. So the the end result you end up with uh, is this this kind of data, and so this is a screenshot from our studio uh, where I, I've loaded up the the final clean data. Um, and so what I do is that you go onto each comedian's uh, page, you look for uh, some way to figure out which sex they are. And uh, in my case, I was uh, I was thinking I looked at how they're described. So I pick pronouns uh, and it's, it's a bit funny in these like pronoun insanity times, but you know, back then at least you could fairly easily rely on the pronouns. So a page that has tons of his, uh, he, his, him, himself, these, and almost no female ones, it's going to be a male uh, with almost, almost certainty, right? So there's a male pronoun fraction here. So whatever this value is, is above 0.5, I'm coding them as as male, right? Um, so sometimes we get some weird ones like like this one, I guess is weird. Male pronoun is 30%. So it, it, it can happen when someone has like um, a wife who's discussed a lot or uh, a mother or something that's mentioned, uh, but usually worked. I checked all the I checked all the cases um, where you could be in doubt and it seemed uh, it was fine. Uh, Upon opening my data, of course, here, I see that the first two cases in my sample set are actually not comedians own pages, but uh, accidentally scraped the, some user page of some guy. And these are actually being included uh, in the study. So this is a small error. Uh, I guess uh, so no one noticed that before. So we from the page, we can also see uh, when they're born, when they die. And so this gives us a very uh, very simple uh, age of death, and it looks like this on the left. And we can see that the average age of death of comedians is, is not even 70. And so you can maybe come up with some explanation of how, you know, doing too much coke is bad for you and so on. Uh, but the, it has a much simpler explanation that we'll come back to later. And it's simply that uh, most people are born quite recently, and as we see over here with the recency bias and the recency coverage. And um, you can only really have an age of death uh, if you and, and being born recently, if you died young, right? So there's a problem with we cover the people who die earlier first, right? So you have to plot it by uh, age of birth, which we'll do in later. But here's the sex distribution um, over time, and um, so we can see that comedians are extremely male skewed, or not extreme, but fairly male skewed over time. But it's uh, been sort of declining since the uh, the late 1800s. Um, it's particularly most uh, decline around here in the 60s, like 50 something. Uh, so these are the years of birth. So it's going to be people active in say the 70s or something. So maybe it's like second wave female comedians or something like that. Uh, we see a big decline of, among those born in the late 70s here. Um, so I'm wondering uh, if this is a woman in red bias effect or it's a real change because if you, there's a bunch of uh, like marginal female comedians that someone wants to to add and that's really what this women in, in, in red uh, editorial bias stuff does it adds marginal figures of females right so there, it's going to be 
comedians that no one have heard of, but you can find like two obscure newspaper articles and that's enough for them to get covered by Wikipedia standards, at least if you're friends with the admins, right, or the admins agree with you. Uh, so you, you can't really tell whether it's a real change or just a recent bias. Um, you'd have to try something more cool. Um, since we're not that lazy, we're slightly lazy, we're doing a Wikipedia study, but we're not that lazy, so if we find uh, a male distribution skew among Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedians, Maybe you're wondering, uh, is this just some Wikipedia thing? What if we look somewhere else? So we're going to do a, a simple cross-validation, so to say. So what I did is that, since I speak Scandinavian, uh, I looked up all the comedic or the comedy clubs of Scandinavia. So these are uh, comedian associations where someone you can you can join and be a member of these associations, and then you'll get listed on a website, and uh, people can hire you and so on, right? So I found. Um, six of these associations that cover Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, the usual, uh, the big free Scandinavians. And um, so I, I looked over all the names there and I saw what the, the male percent were. Uh, so it looks like more or less that the, that the, um, that's some weird uh, Swedish numbers. Huh, that's probably a error. Yeah, um, yeah, so, the anyway, so the sex distribution holds also in these Scandinavian data. There's uh, more more women in the Swedish data, as you would kind of expect, because Sweden is more woke than Denmark. Denmark is like 90 something percent. Uh, and it when you do look over some of these Swedish ones, you do see that there's a bunch of like uh, typical butch, uh, ugly, ugly feminist um, comedians, and they probably wouldn't be included in Denmark because we're not into that kind of self torture. Um, one thing that many people don't know is that comedians are quite smart. And uh, I, when I did a review a few years ago, I found that there's free or free studies of IQs of comedians that I could find. Maybe there's more. Uh, and surprisingly, all three of them find IQ averages that are around 130. Um, and some of them, you know, use this or that test. Some of them are from the 60s. Some of them are female comedians. Some of them are male comedians. One of them compares like just local comedians with students, but they all give more or less kind of the same result in, in the 130s area. Um, so that made me wonder. So in Wikipedia, of course, we can check whether someone uh, has a university degree and you can look for uh, specifically in their, um, in the user page, you can check whether they graduated a uh, university, this or that. It will, it will be mentioned usually in the text or in the categories as we'll see. Um, and so we'd expect that if comedians are really two standard deviations above average, uh, they should have really high education levels compared to average of uh, their you know, cohort, right? So what we do is that we plot uh, education by year of birth and by sex, and we see whether they're like mar really far above, uh, as you'd expect. And and indeed they are. Even if we even if we go back to 1920s, then comedians already have about 25% uh, uh, university degree. That's uh, that's about the same as the population average in, I don't know, 2000 or something like that. So they're 80 years ahead in, in getting to that level, right? Uh, you also see the interesting female advantage all the way, except the, for right here. Um, so the definitely education levels are commensurate. They're uh, coherent with the, uh, with the IQ, right? So we're not, um, we're not too surprised there. Um, but we can go further. And so to go back to the uh, life expectancy and uh, co birth cohort. And so we also know that smarter people, they live longer, right? And so if we look at this data, we see the problem with the, the, the recency bias with the, uh, with the age of death, right? Because if you're someone who is born in this time, you can't, really, uh, you can't really be too much older because then you wouldn't be covered uh, as being dead, right? The people who are who are born here but not dead yet, they're not in this plot, right? There's a there's a it's the opposite of survival bias, right? It's a death bias. We're only seeing the, the dead people here. Um, and so what we can see is that if we actually look in the old data where there's no bias because all of these people will be dead, or, well almost all of them, we can see that uh, life expectancy is actually quite quite high. It's like 80, 87 or so average life expectancy for someone born in, in 1920, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Um, it's a bit tricky to adjust for this because um, you cannot become a famous comedian to be covered by Wikipedia unless you made it to at least your 30s or uh, maybe 40s, right? So uh, if you died in infancy, 
then you can't make it to this to this age, right? So these values you're looking at here are conditional upon survival until at least age uh, 30 or 40. So you have to look up a, a life uh, life expectancy chart that gives the conditional uh, expected life uh, life expectancy. And I did that, and you still find that comedians uh, live a bit longer, and um, you can do some simple math and figure out how consistent this is uh, with the intelligence and you, I find some level of consistency uh, but this is kind of very crude way of looking at it so if someone is more interested in it they, they could look into it um, something that's been interesting to uh, many people is that um, there's a lot of funny Jews and um, so in this sample uh, of the 1400 so uh, comedians 17 percent are tagged as Jewish on Wikipedia and in the US uh, USA subset of the data, uh, about 90% of the data is, is American. Um, in the US subset, uh, it's about 21 and a half percent are are Jewish. And if we think of this of the US population, the demographics of the US in this time period, we can guess that if we include some of the partial Jews, or maybe two to three percent of the Jew, of the American population will have been Jewish in the, in this uh, in this data set. Uh, taking into account um, the age of birth of these people. Uh, in recent times, the US population has been increasing, but it's mostly from Hispanic immigration, and since uh, they aren't covered in this kind of data yet, so we don't need to take them into account. So um, still, however, we do accrued uh, relative risk or relative ratio, we get about seven, 7.2 with these numbers. And so Jews uh, seem to be 600% over percent among uh, comedians, at least comedians that make it so far to be covered by Wikipedia. Uh, and so here I've, I've taken the, the subset of the, the Jewish comedians in this data set and uh, so I've sorted them by very crudely just by the number of times he, the pronoun, is mentioned in the article. And so this is just a way to see whether the article is longer, right? Um, so in, in, in hindsight I should have sorted by uh, total pronouns over here or maybe male pronouns, but you know it's good enough. So we see that if I don't really know American um, Comedians, but if you look over these, uh, um, hopefully they should be people you've sort of heard of as being comedians and being Jewish. Um, to specifically to see how whether someone is uh, this or that uh, ethnicity or uh, national origin or something like this. Uh, well, we, the easiest way is uh, looking at the structured data in the Wikipedia categories, and so this is what's in the bottom of uh, pages on Wikipedia, and it will have. Things like the uh, birth year, the death year, which century they're from, you know, any kind of orders or whatever they've received, blah, blah, blah. Uh, male comedians, blah, blah. So a lot of stuff and fairly sometimes redundant, right? Any, any sh acts they might have been um, associated with will also be there, right? But we also see the uh, ethnicity. So you see that uh, Jewish is mentioned here three times. And so if you just... Uh, to extract this uh, category from any pages that you're looking at, you can easily see whether you know Jewish or Ashkenazi or Sephardic or something in there is mentioned, right? So that's just what I did, and I I I, uh, I did this also for uh, you know national origin and so on for the entire dataset. Although I didn't cover it here, uh, but it's in the paper if you want to see more of that. Um, so that's that's basically how I do it. Um, this will overcount uh, Jews to the extent that. This way you'll be counting people who are of partial ancestry, right? And so when, we, when we're looking at this 21.5%, uh, it's going to include people who are, you know, half Jewish, a quarter Jewish, even, you know, less Jewish than that. As long as they mention somewhere that they have Jewish uh, ancestry or Jewish descent and some journalist or may biographer or something, he covers this somewhere. And someone puts that on Wikipedia, it can you can be counted, right? So, um, so it's not totally an optimal scientific way of doing it, but it's uh, better than nothing, right? Um, so, to round it up, uh, this is what we need to do: how to get money for research. This is actually a book written by uh, some feminist in the 1970s or 80s or something. Um, as usual, the funding options for supporting this kind of uh, channel and research is below and uh, of course your donations are crucial for this kind of research. Uh, all the citation sources, blah blah blah, they're here as usual. Ciao!